The work of the 911 operators and dispatch is extremely important. We're a city of 8 million people and counting. It is the largest city in the United States. And people of all walks of life live here, come through here. And so their work is very important. They can be the call between life and death, between saving a life or not. New York City 911, police, fire, and medical. Is he breathing? OK, ma'am, help is on the way. Ma'am, take a deep breath. It's going to be OK. Well, those who we've met today are people who have really committed to, number one, the department, committed to God in terms of being chosen for this position, committed to making sure that the people of New York City and both tourists and those who are residents are taken care of to the best of their ability. So I'd like to think that they do the best they can every day. Just It's just pure chaos, and then when that's over, you go and do the next emergency. When that's over, you go and do the next one. It's just what we do. So stay right where you are. I'll stay with you until help arrives. The work is very intense, and so people have to stay very focused, very faith-centered, and have to be very much a unit. They have to be calm under all circumstances because they're providing help. They don't know what the call is going to be on the other line. They don't know who the voice is going to be. So it is one that they're trained for, but it takes more than just training. It takes faith, and it takes a focus, and it takes a firm dedication that this is where I'm supposed to be to help the people who call me. Every day I choose to come to be the answer for those people who need me to be the answer. When the phone rings, you don't know. When you hear the tone in your ear through your headset, you don't know who's going to be on the line. And what is it to you anyway? You have to help the person that's calling. Faith plays a big part. Um, when you come in every day and you have to come in with your armor on and ready to face whatever is going to come to you. You know, you have to pray. I pray every day. When I get up, when I, as I'm coming to work, as I'm going home, I pray. I believe faith is everything. You know, it undergirds them, it prepares them, it centers them. God prepares us because He gives us the patience. I mean, training is everything. Right, but you still have to have some patience. You still have to have something that class doesn't prepare you for, right? To endure all the tragedy you hear all day long. Nobody is ever calling for something good. No one's ever calling to say, it's a beautiful day. You can't prepare yourself for what's gonna go on because you don't know what's gonna go on throughout the day. Faith for me has always been there because if I'm taking a call, as a PCT and I'm an operator, you have to have faith because some of these people are crying out. Some, I took a call, a guy was on top of the Brooklyn Bridge. Prayer does change things. So we must make sure that when we hit the potholes of life, that we have something that undergirds us. And what that is, is for faith. And now not only is it individually recognized, but people are saying, let's come together. You're a believer, I'm a believer. Instead of a coffee break, let's take a faith break. Uh, September 11, 2001, I uh, decided to work overtime that day. I was a midnight worker. It was a quiet, beautiful morning. I think the sun was out, it was calm. And I decided I was going to work overtime to go to lunch with my husband before I went to bed. I was dispatching and I was in zone one, and an officer came over the air and he informed me that a plane just went into a building. It was, it was something you can never forget. We have a breaking news story to tell you about. Apparently, a plane has just crashed into the World Trade Center here in New York City. It happened just a few moments ago, apparently. We have very little information available. And then the world changed. It calls just started coming from everywhere. People were running, screaming. They didn't know what to do. The next call that came in was somebody calling for help from inside of the tower. It was horrible because they, you had to be calm. Then you were thinking about your family members that was trapped out there, so everybody had to hold that unity to help each other so we can help the public. 
my day started fine until I w looked up and seen our banner board and it said 523 calls waiting. So right away I knew something was going on. It was just your body felt despair, like you were helpless because there was a lot of people needing help and the only thing you can do is try to get them assistance. And majority of our assistants were down also, remember they with the towers class, so you really couldn't reach out or hear anybody. Only the public could hear us, but they couldn't see us. The lady was like, there's smoke, there's smoke everywhere. And um, we followed procedure that day. We, we stuck to the script. It just was a day that, um, it still bothers me today. And I remember the lady saying, should I break a window to get get some air? And I'm like, oh my God, the room is filling up with smoke. You know, are they gonna be able to get to her? But FD was confident that they would get to her. People giving their last rites. Um, people explaining to us how hot the building was. You know, just telling us who they family were, who, if we could get in touch with them, we got everything that day. It didn't matter who was black or white, female, male. Um, it was like, can we pray together? And I remember in the lobby of one of the buildings that did not get hit, um, we formed a circle and we began to pray. You know, I did have a call where Cola asked me to pray with her and you accept that responsibility. People are screaming, they was missing family members. Only thing we could do was take the information. Because remember, we had units out there with law, so we was trying to do the best we can to assist the public. Another call came in, and another call came in, and some people were asking me to pray with them. Some people, you know, towards a two or three hours in when the next plane hit, I can't give you the minutes when the next plane hit. Um, for some reason, I got that same lady, and she said there were five of them in the room. And they could see the tail of the first plane. So at that point, to them, they believed that it was over. They Nobody's gonna rescue them, because I guess in the time that it took her to hang up and call back, they realized that they weren't gonna get out. They're the unsung heroes of the first responder network. They are the most important people in New York City. I, I cannot think of, of anyone more important than a 911 operator. You go where you're sent. You're chosen to go to a place and you go and you do your best. And that day, I think I did my very best. It's a big city and it's extremely important. You know, um, a lot of people forget who's behind that phone. It's everyday New Yorkers, mothers, fathers, brothers, uncles, and um, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. Them on the outside calling us, they think that we, we want to ask these questions. No, this is what we have to do to ascertain the information that we need to get you the help. I do it because I enjoy helping people. I like the fact that I'm doing something worthwhile. Uh, it gives me a good feeling even though it is stressful, and it makes me feel good. And I, I like knowing that I'm helping someone. There's a scripture that says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I heal from heaven, and then will I heal the land. So our land is in need of healing. It's not about who you voted for or did not vote for. It's about that we are humanity, and we must walk together, we must work together, we must win together. And so I am on the front lines being a soul soldier for the soul of this nation. I think that this job chose me. I didn't choose the job. I love what I do. I like helping people. You know, for me at the end of the day, it's rewarding. You know, I can go home and sleep well at night because I know I got this person an ambulance, or this person, I just talked to them because they just needed someone to talk to. They may not have needed any type of um, police assistance, fire assistance, they just need to hear a calming voice. Just to know that there is someone that cares. Even if it, I make a difference in one person's life, that's, I feel great. Oh, definitely, I recognize the responsibility. 
I've been here 26 years. We're still people. We definitely are still people. We're the people that are here for the city.